wait until the end to ask and uh, put or put questions in the chat. Uh, we find that that works out pretty well too. And uh, please limit your questions and speaking time to one to two minutes so we can allow others to speak. Um, and uh, to our left is uh, for Happy Women's History Month, uh, Amanda Rich is our co-founder of Speak for the Trees and she's also a board member. All right, so let's, let's get right into our agenda. Next slide, please. All right, so welcome again and happy Women's History Month. Uh, we're gonna go through community updates and announcements. Uh, we are going to have a Boston Tree Ordinance discussion with Jordan Frias, who is the Chief of Staff and uh, for uh, Ricardo Arroyo, Councilor Ricardo Arroyo. Uh, and we will be joined soon by uh, Yasmin, Yasmin Radassi, who's the Director of Research, Policy and Budget for Councilor Arroyo. Uh, we are having, we'll have some updates on the Urban Forest Plan meeting that's happening on Monday. Um, also, we have some updates about our Arbor Week events that I didn't put into the agenda, I apologize, but uh, I do have slides for it, so you will see it. Um, and then we'll talk about our next meeting in uh, April. Uh, oh, also, happy Women's History Month. So Bear and Melissa Lavangi, they're arborists and they uh, run the Women's Tree Climbing Workshop. They did a wonderful workshop with our Teen Urban Tree Corps youth over the summer. Uh, they had all the kids climbing trees in Franklin Park and they all look really, really great. Bear and Melissa are two awesome partners with us who, um, who we can't wait to work with again sometime this year. Well, I think some of the grown-ups climb the trees too, right? I think some of the grown-ups did. Yes, our uh, education coordinator, Eva, did, and so did David. David was and rem remind me, did you climb up the tree? I didn't climb up the tree. No, I didn't. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I was taking pictures. Yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> taking pictures. I just see that uh, Yasmin joined us too. So awesome, we're good to go. All right, so for community updates, well, but before I get to that, I gotta say happy Women's History Month to um, our board chair for Speak for the Trees, Dr. S. Atia Martin. She's also the founder of All Aces. Uh, I don't think she's in our meeting today, but uh, we just wanna send a happy Women's History Month out to her. She's, a, she's an amazing person. So for community updates, um, please feel free to raise your hand um, and uh, let us know what's going on in your community and some of the work that you're doing. I might be, if, you're, if someone's, I see people talking who are on mute. All right, Tyler, the floor is yours. Hi, so I just want to check in and uh, relate that um, Elena, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Elena and I attended the Harvard Commons meeting um, or the, the meeting for the property near Harvard Commons where they're looking to put an athletic field in. Um, not 100% sure where they're at in the, the planning for that um, or whether it's going through for sure, but we definitely brought up a lot of points about urban forestry and the need to protect as many trees as possible. Um, I think communicated that we didn't, we didn't sort of think the field was a great idea for that piece of land, um, even after all the presentation from the person who was there, so. Thank you, Tyler, appreciate that. Alana, you're next. Hi, thank you, Jarrell. Um, I just wanted to say, Tyler, thank you so much. I appreciate you attending that meeting as well. And so like he said, um, we definitely did advocate for different uses for that space. And then David and Lisa were actually um, with us on another meeting related to the same parcel of land. Um, and again, still advocating for different use and Dorote as well. And, you know, bringing up the issue with the toxicity from the turf, you know, um, the, the wetlands that the buffer should, you know, be larger than the buffer that they're indicating there, which I think is like 25 feet. So there are still so many issues that um, haven't been, there hasn't been a deep dive into yet. It's still in the beginning stages, um, and Tyler, to your question. So they're still in the beginning stages. And Thursday, the 17th, the CAC will be conducting their vote to determine whether or not they're able to change the land disposition agreement to try to further go through the city's zoning process for this parcel of land to become a field. So I'm trying to stay in lockstep with them every step of the way to keep advocating for the preservation 
of that parcel. And, um, and, I, and I'm so thankful to all of you who are showing up as well in these spaces. Thank you. Thank you so much for the update, Solana. And you too, Tyler. Um, anyone else? Any updates? All right. Susan, the floor is yours. And then Lisa. You're on mute. Hey, everyone. There you go. Um, Susan Stamps on the Arlington Tree Committee. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update as far as what we're doing in Arlington. We can, uh, were one of the first uh, places in the Commonwealth to have a tree bylaw which regulated the cutting of trees during uh, development. And um, we have progressively uh, decreased the size of trees that fall under the bylaw. And we had a successful meeting with the select board uh, the other day and they approved um, our town meeting warrant article to make changes in the bylaw at town meeting in April, um, which includes reducing the DBH or width or diameter breast height of the applicable trees from eight inches to six inches. So we're pretty excited about that. It's gonna save a lot more trees. Um, in Arlington, when people are, we removed the planting option altogether from the tree bylaw a few years ago. He used to say, if you're a developer and you, you want to take down a tree, you either have to replant or you have to pay. And we found that the replanted trees were dying or that it wasn't being done. So we just removed it. So, and we increased the per inch of DBH um, from like, I don't know, $50 to something that actually really reflected the cost of buying, planting, and caring for a tree for two years, which is 375 inches per dollars per inch of DBH. So a 10 inch tree cost the builder $3,750. It goes into our, our dedicated fund. And I was astounded to see that we, we have $240,000 in our tree fund. So now we're, so we're really scrambling to find things to do with it. And we've um, we're coming up with all kinds of new programs to um, plant trees in environmental justice areas on private property, um, back of sidewalk, which is like 20 feet off the sidewalk, which is allowed under chapter 87. And um, so anyway, it's spring and we're all very excited about trees. So I guess that's my report from Arlington. Thanks. Thank you so, thank you so much, Susan. Appreciate it. Lisa? Yeah, hi everybody. Happy Friday. Um, uh, please remind me if last month, if uh, I, I had the news about the, uh, the kind of breakthrough down at um, Canterbury Brook on, uh, on the Eastern Rosendale side uh, with the conservation restriction, did I say I that? Do, I do remember you mentioning okay, that. Good. I made a comment about the trash that's uh, down that's there. That's right, that's right, thank you. Okay, so, um, uh, well, I guess my main one is that um, the Crane Ledge Woods Coalition is having one, not one, but two end of March events. So I'm going to put the uh, link in the chat. Um, there's going to be a standout rally um, around the woods, on the outside of the woods, um, on uh, Saturday, March 26th. And then we're going to have another big community meeting um, on March 30th. And we really encourage everybody uh, to share, spread the word and participate, you know, as we are in budget season, this is uh, the campaign is uh, focusing on on asking the city to put, you know, the line item in um, for not just Crane Ledge Woods, but um, inland climate, uh, inland land acquisition for climate resilience. All right, thank you, Lisa. Much appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we probably should move on. I don't see any more hands, so we're gonna move on uh, in our agenda. Um, anyone else? No? Okay, all right. So thank you for your community updates. And now we are going to move on to our discussion. Oh, 
Hi, Tia, again. We're going to have our Boston Tree Ordinance discussion with Jordan Prius and uh, Yasmin Radasi. Um, I do want to say happy his, happy Women's History Month to Yvonne Lair. She's uh, from the Friends of Menlia Cass Boulevard. I don't know if she's on the meeting just yet, but uh, she's, uh, she's uh, she did a lot of work in Menlia Cass, and she's been photographed in, in the Globe paper, I think, right, David? The Globe and the Herald are all over, yeah. So just want to send a quick happy Women's History Month to her. All right, uh, so... Uh, Jordan, are you there? Hi, everyone. I'm here. There you go. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Debbie, would you spotlight um, or highlight Jordan? I'm not sure how you do that. Thank you. <laughs> um, actually, I just had a request. I apologize. So my colleague, Yasmin, who mm -hmm. is way well versed on tree stuff than I am, is actually asking if we can be moved later onto the agenda. I apologize. Is that possible? Oh, sure. To, yeah, about to where? Like, um, okay, yeah, we can, I think we can do that. So sorry, yeah, we, everyone. No worries. Is she, is she on the call right now or is she coming later? She's coming later. Okay, okay. I thought I saw her come in before. She had to hop out for a second. Yeah, <laughs> okay. 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 She's okay. a lot okay. more knowledgeable than I am. So I just, that's not a problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Continue. No worries. No worries. All right. Um, Let's see, where are we now? Okay, so I guess we can talk about our upcoming Arbor Week events to me or something else. Yes. I thought I was sharing the screen and I wasn't. So I, we just <laughs> wanted, and I don't know if uh, someone from the city uh, parks department is here. I think Maggie, are you here? Or someone I'm else? here. Hi, Maggie. You want, hey, Maggie. Nice to see you. Um, I thought uh, you could just, and I can drop the links in, but if you wanted a minute to just talk about this exciting opportunity on Monday, share it with the, with the group. Sure thing. I really appreciate you um, including it in today's talk. Um, hello, everyone. Good to see you again. Uh, sorry for lurking there. Just <laughs> got another thing there. Um, yeah, so March 14th at 530, from 530 to 7, we'll have an overview of the urban forest plan, which should be particularly useful for people who may be less familiar with the work. And we'll go over some of the analysis and data, which could be interesting for you all, and um, talking about some draft goals and recommendations. So uh, that'd be great if you could attend or spread the word. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Maggie. I saw your name and I was like, is Maggie really here? It's good to have you here. You know, definitely, it's good to see you. Good to see you. All right. I I I hate trying to do two things at once, but I'm trying to get the the links uh, in the chat so people can can have them, and we'll also send them out later in the um in the meeting notes. But um, here is a link to um, the urban forest plan, and. Uh, oh, Claire has a question for you, Maggie. It's, uh, will the session be recorded on Monday and be available for those who can't make it? You bet. And we'll also post the slides if you don't want to hear all the audio. And I think the link I'm about to drop in, and you can tell me if this is right, Maggie, is the direct link to the event. It's not a registration link. It's, it's a direct link to the actual Zoom. Yes. And... Uh... There's no there's no registration required, and uh, you can find out more information about the event by going to the project page, or if you just are ready to join at 5.30, use that bit.ly link. Great. Well, it's a big milestone, and I know, Maggie, this has been a long time in coming, um, so congratulations mm -hmm. on, on this presentation. There's a lot of excitement to see what, what the results are. Definitely, congrats so much. There's another question in the chat. Oh, okay, those are the links. Okay. All right, so our upcoming Arbor Week events for 2022, we have a lot going on. Um, and Devi, would you like to, you wanted to speak on that? Yeah, so we're excited to uh, be celebrating Arbor Week again. Um, it's the last Friday in, in April is not only uh, Arbor, Arbor Day in Boston, but it happens to be the Arbor Day uh, nationally. Um, some states have it different times depending on their weather. I think 
Alaska sometime in June and Texas is sometime in, in March. But Massachusetts Arbor Day is the last Friday in April and the National Arbor Day is also last Friday in April. And we are celebrating here at Speak for the Trees with a series of events. Uh, Jarrell has uh, created a slide with his events, but we will send uh, the link to our events calendar, which we're still pulling together. There are a couple of more events that will be posted in the coming weeks there. Some will be in person and some will be virtual. Um, so we have forest bathing um, at the Arnold Arboretum. Uh, I believe that's a Saturday and mushroom for, or a Sunday and mushroom foraging on the same day out in Chestnut Hill. Uh, we have a wonderful discussion with our friend and colleagues, Judith Foster of Hero Nurturing Center and Jeff Perrin, who is a professor at Leslie, talking about the ability of trees and nature to heal. Um, I'll be giving a, a talk over at BC at, in person about um, how we think about trees as what I'm calling boundary objects. We have an intern speaking about tree equity and urban tree cover. That's a virtual event. Um, and we're encouraging also folks, uh, community groups to uh, distribute seedlings. And I'll drop a link there for you all where you can sign up and receive free seedlings from us um, and table anytime that week and distribute those seedlings to your friends and neighbors. Last year, we gave away about 900 seedlings throughout the city. Uh, this year, we're, we've ordered 1,400 seedlings, um, white oaks, tulip poplars, bald cypresses, service berries, sweet gums, uh, what did I miss, chinkapin oaks, Washington hawthorns. It's all there on our website with a really easy to use sign up form. Let us know uh, the scope of how many seedlings you want, where the event will be held, and we'll get those seedlings to you. So I'll drop both those links in there. And I, I think I put, the, I put the links in there. You did. I appreciate you, Jarrell. Yep. Um, and keep posted on our on our like I said on our um, list of events. Um, it's really exciting. Today is such a beautiful day. I woke up early and the sun was already so bright and high in the sky. You could sort of not only see but smell spring around the corner. Uh, keep an eye on those buds. They're slowly going to unfurl in the next couple of weeks. So. Um, Thank you for that, Jarrell, and um, back to you. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, let's go to our next slide. And so our Buff Symposium. Uh, some of you may remember that it said May 2022, but now it says June 2022. Um, we have to uh, have our symposium, you know, in before the end of uh, June, and we moved it to I don't know what I'm saying, excuse me. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so we're, I'm still in the process of setting up the committee. Uh, now we have, we do have some people who have already expressed interest. They will be receiving a doodle poll from me to, to see uh, we're going to arrange a date for our first meeting. So if there's anyone else who is interested, this is kind of like a last call. So if you're interested, please let me know by one o'clock today and I'll send you the doodle poll and uh, so you can be included in our meeting. Um, again, this is a meeting so we can throw out ideas, suggestions, um, and give some feedback about what we want the symposium to look like. Um, it will be a hybrid. It will be uh, in-person. It will be virtual. Uh, the in-person space will be here in Fields Corner at the Dorchester Fields Lab on Dorchester Avenue. Um, and we have, we have a lot of things that we want to do for this event. I'm excited about it. Um, I hope those who are who have expressed interest in being a part of this are excited too. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get a poll out to you as soon as we can uh, and then sign up anyone else who may be interested. By today, 1 p.m. though, thank you very much. All right. Perfect timing, because I think Yasmin just showed up. It's perfect. It's, it's all scripted. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so uh, those are updates for our, for our work here. Excited to see folks in person, um, outdoors, indoors, and uh, wherever else virtually. And with that, I think, um, Yasmin, are you on? Are you ready? Can I highlight you? Yes, I'm sorry that I'm late, everyone. Uh, my name is Yasmin. I work for Council Arroyo. I'm the Director of Policy Research and Budget. Um, I'm sorry, I had an appointment, I couldn't move. And then today's been a little crazy. Um, 
So uh, I'll just give like a brief uh, overview. Um, so we refiled our tree canopy ordinance this year um, because we ran out of time in the last legislative session. Um, so it had to be reintroduced. So we've done that alongside Councilor Braden's office and it's been assigned to the government operations committee, which Councilor Arroyo um, is chairing this year. Um, and uh, we have met with Chief uh, White Hammond recently. Um, we had a meeting with the counselors, um, the staffers, and her office and staff that works on the urban forest plan, um, because we really want to make sure that our ordinance is supporting the work that they're already doing as part of the public engagement and community engagement process of the urban forest plan. Um, and we don't want obviously all the advocates and people that have been working on this for a long time to feel like that conversation has been discarded and they have to start all over for this one. So we're really hoping to integrate and work alongside the um, Parks Department um, to get this ordinance to a place where it's going to do what needs to be done. Um, so that conversation was very helpful in terms of framing how we're, our relationship is going to be. Um, I think they had told me that they hope to have their executive report out um, on April 22nd. So um, we had talked about scheduling a hearing about a week after that so that we can have the department come in, talk about the urban forest plan, the executive uh, summary and their uh, major findings, and then what that means for a tree canopy ordinance. Um, so that hearing would be April 29th in the morning at 10 a.m. Um, and obviously public testimony would be included for that hearing. So feel free to share that. It hasn't, oh, actually don't share yet because it hasn't been officially public noticed. Um, I just wanted to confirm the date with Parks Department, but when it is public notice, I'll make sure to send you guys over the link for the public notice. And that way you can share that link and it, it'll have all the information and um, instructions on how to sign up for public testimony. Um, and then we're hoping also that with the upcoming budget season, for the city council that we can talk about what kind of budget needs would be associated with a tree canopy ordinance. Um, and we've also had discussions uh, with the parks department with chief white Hammond about what kind of budget increase they they're looking at to increase the amount of arborists and people that would be staffing and enforcing any kind of ordinance like this. Um, and especially given that they currently already don't really have the amount of staffing that they need. So if we're gonna add even more to their plate, we have to make sure that we're backing that up with funds. Um, so that's gonna be a, pro a process that's working kind of in parallel to the ordinance process um, at the budget hearings for parks. Um, and I think that's pretty much what I have added broad level. Um, so yeah, happy to answer any other questions or anything like that. Thank you, Yasmin. It's great to meet you. Much appreciate it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Oh, Molly. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for that update, Yasmin. Um, I was just curious if you have um, any sort of drafts for the language that you can share, um, any sort of content that you're willing or able to share, just to get a sense of what is in that ordinance. So I think, am I wrong? Did someone just share it in the chat? I think Jarrell just, thank you, Jarrell, just dropped the PDF from last year's which I think is the same as this year. So I don't think there's a difference. Yeah, it's the same. And I wanna stress that this is a placeholder document. Um, we basically picked this from, um, I believe it was Somerville um, as a placeholder um, pending discussions and the release of the urban forest plan. Um, at which point we're gonna strengthen the ordinance, um, tighten the scope or expand the scope based on um, what their budget is going to look like, what staffing is going to look like, and um, the contents of that executive report. 
Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions? <clears throat> Celeste? No, I did, um, but Molly asked what I was gonna ask. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, let's see, do you, do you have anything to add or ask or? I'm trying to go through and make sure I don't see any hands. Oh, Sarah, there you go. Yes. Um... I don't know if anyone's prepared to answer, but I'll put this out there. Um, my memory is that there's not a lot of clarity regarding trees on private property, but that's where most of the loss is happening. And wondered if anyone uh, between now and late April can be thinking of models that work elsewhere in that area because that's kind of the elephant in the room. Thank you. Yeah, and I think um, that's definitely a part of the ordinance that we need to strengthen and uh, bolster. The Parks Department, when we had the conversation with Chief uh, White Hammond, said that some of the issues is, that, or one of the issues is that they barely have the staff to upkeep their public trees. Um, and keep up with the public tree side of things. So in the budget process, we're hoping to both bolster their staffing and funding for public trees and create the capacity for um, inclusion of regulation for private trees. Um, so we are aware that most of the tree loss does happen on um, residential, re uh, residential private properties. Um, and that is something that we're seeking to have included in the scope of this ordinance. Um, and to that point, I, I just had a question, Maggie, you might defer me to wait till Monday, but I'm wondering if uh, the, the initial report from the UFP is going to include sort of a, a breakdown of some of that where loss has happened over time. Uh, on Monday, we will be going over some of the canopy coverage data that we've been seeing, but because there is so much to cover, we may not get into like all the, the facets that people are, are looking forward to, but um, if we do miss out on anything that you'd like to discuss or learn about in canopy coverage and where it's happening, we do have the five-year report available. And the, the report itself will be coming up with policy uh, recommendations as well. Thank you, Maggie. All right, any more questions for Ricardo or Royal's office? Oh, sorry, I have a quick question here. Um, just a couple curiosities with the proposal. Um, is there going to be any um, things about protecting trees during construction? And then the next thing is I see right now there might be a $100 fine and that was just from some quick skimming um, I'm concerned that they that is a very low fine and that may not deter um, certain types of people from removing trees. Thanks. Absolutely. And um, I probably should have made this clear also when I was giving my overview. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with ordinance process and how the city council moves those forward. So our hearing is basically going to focus on um, part, the um, urban forest plan executive summary and presenting that information. Um, and general context around the ordinance. And then it's gonna be followed by a series of working sessions where we dig in on the language and make changes. And those will be based on some of the policy recommendations that come out of the urban forest plan and on other considerations that will be brought up at the hearing. So this is definitely not a final version. And again, a placeholder mostly that we're gonna be working to really cater or I guess more um, directly cater it to Boston's situation and Boston's needs, and um, also the uh, Boston's like a bigger place, obviously, than like Somerville. So we can't we some of the things didn't really transition over well in the ordinance, but that's something that we'll be fixing at the working sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. Celeste. Yeah, I, th I think this is more a comment. Um, 
after working for a, at least a year on the passage of the local wetlands ordinance, um, which is somewhat parallel to tree protection in some ways. Uh, we, in my experience, the there was strong opposition from uh, developers and the development groups who had the top lawyers to negotiate. So it was NIOP that sat across the table at most of the working groups and um, fought most of the provisions of, of the local wetlands ordinance, especially, I mean, even such things as notification to 300 foot of butters. You know, they wanted 100 foot of butters, that sort of thing. So uh, the working groups will be interesting. It'll be a process. Thank you, Celeste. All right, I, have, I see a lot of hands on chins. It seems like people have a lot of questions they're not asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I hope you're okay with all the questions. <laughs> I just want to say, if it is April 29th, we got to make sure that uh, we recognize that as Arbor Day as well, sitting around together. Yes, I mean, you oh. were, I think um, you, you maybe missed the beginning of the, or the first half where, where we shared Arbor Week is coming up and Friday, April 29th is not only Arbor Day for the country, but it's Arbor Day for Massachusetts and for Boston. And um, so. I can't remember if it was in our conversation conversation with Chief White Hammond or um, a conversation I had with Braden's office, but I think part of the choosing of that day was centered around that and it just happened to be a good, like it, the timing ended up working out well, given the, um, the focus of the ordinance. David, you said the 29th, I thought the 30th was Arbor Day. It's, uh, whatever the Friday is, so I think it, it Friday. Okay, so it's not. It's the last week. Friday of April. So oh. it's sort of. Sometimes it's the 29th. Sometimes it's the 30th. I think this year it's. I've been telling 29th. everybody it's the 30th because that's the Saber the Square event. <laughs> yeah, we wanted that on a on a week end, right? So it's the day after. Gotcha. All right. All right. Um, so um, we uh, our next meeting is uh on Friday, April 8th, uh, 2011, same time. 2012, uh, Jarrell. 2012. 2022, sorry. What did you say 20, sorry. At 11, I'm sorry. Wait, did I say the wrong day? Did I'm tongue-tied now. <laughs> I'm trying to get the slide up while you're talking and I can't okay. find it, there it is. <laughs> All right. There we go. So, uh, so yeah, our next meeting is uh, Friday, April 8th. 2022 and uh we hope that uh you know we can we hope that we see you all there um i i think that this was a this was a pretty quick meeting to be what do you think yeah people are quieter than usual i know yeah i'm used to getting so many updates and you know it's all right though it's cool you know you can save oh. up for the next meeting oh, oh eric Eric's is here to know. save us to save us, yes. <laughs> Hi guys. Yeah, I, I usually like to say something during this meeting. So I figured if you're winding down, um, this is a good slide um, that I want to say something really quickly about. And it's that I'm really encouraged by all of the um, recent sort of um, support and you know promotion of women in urban forestry that I've been seeing in Boston specifically. Um, congratulations, Claire, on your new position, community tree specialist. That's awesome. Um, this uh, last month was also contained uh, International uh, Women and Girls in Science Day, and then there was International Women's Day, and now it's Women's History Month. And I think we should just keep the charge going for women in urban forestry. We have a lot to contribute. Um, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Mass Audubon's urban ecologist, so I'm working on ecology across um, a bunch of different cities, but Boston is where my network is really strong, and I'm just really encouraged to see a lot of women participating and bringing their ideas to the front. Thank you, Yasmin, for all the work you're doing. Um, thank you always, Maggie, for all the work you're doing. And um, happy Arbor Day to everybody coming up. 
I'm going to share a little a little story, Erica, from our teen urban tree core program, which uh, over the summer was, I think, um, half. Well, I shouldn't say half and half. It was a. Uh, how, how 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 should I put this with so many genders? Uh, way complicated ways to talk about gender. We were very gender inclusive over the summer with lots of different representation, um, and when we uh, transitioned to a school year program. Uh, the teens that were most interested uh, self-identified as women. And Eva, our, our um, education coordinator, turned to me and she said, David, I'm worried there are no, there are no um, male identified people in this group. But I said, so it is, right? Let's, let's celebrate women wanting to, uh, young women wanting to be uh, part of this movement. So um, thank you, uh, yes, for, for that recognition. Um, of, of the history and, and the important role um, that we see uh, women playing in urban forestry. We've had great fun time with the women's uh, climbing workshop. Um, they're a nationally recognized organization, but they actually happen to be in Massachusetts. Um, and those sisters are amazing arborists. Um, and if you ever wanna learn how to climb a tree, that's the, that's the place to go. Definitely. And they were they were super awesome with our young people. Yes. All right. Well, if that is all that we have for today, we will end our meeting. And I will end it with a big thank you. And I look forward to we look forward to meeting again at our next meeting in April. And I hope that uh, everyone that's here today can come up. Oh, Jacqueline, you're pointing at the you're on mute, Jacqueline. Sorry. Just trying to say hello to Claire Corcoran. Hello, Claire. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and we forgot to announce Darrell uh, formally, and, and Erica did it for us, but just wanted to introduce Claire Corcoran, who is our no community tree specialist here at Speak for the Trees. Um, okay, you, you have to highlight her. You have to highlight her. She has to say something. Come on. All right, hold on. <laughs> There she Look is. Claire. Yay. Welcome, Claire. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So many familiar faces, so many people I know from different contexts over the years. I'm really happy to be here and excited to learn more about the urban forest plan and the ordinance. So much great energy around this stuff after so long. So Thanks for the warm welcome and just greetings, everyone. I just see, all, I just know so many of you so well, and it's just wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. So everybody spread the word that Claire is with Speak for the Trees now. <laughs> all right. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Um, we will see you next month, April 8th, 2022. And please, if you're interested in joining Jarrell's committee um, or to help Jarrell plan for the symposium, we're excited uh, for that. It should be a, you know, an event where we can all get to be together and share in the work and celebration. I know Jarrell's been working hard to pull together the committee. So we're really looking for your input on what that symposium will look like. So please make sure you reach out to him by, was it 1 p.m. today, Jarrell? 1 p.m. today, yes, sir. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Molly.